So for this video, I am just going to simply describe the safe loading for transport of cattle. So I'm going to kind of touch base on how you should load, trailer preparation, proper venting for the time of year and temperature, uh, how much space an animal should have in the trailer, and all that kind of stuff. And my dog's eating the wasp. <laughs> but anyways, um... So when you're loading cattle, uh, we typically, <laughs> we don't have a very wonderful system at my dad's place for loading. Um, so we have those freestanding panels. So we kind of set up a pen with an alley getting into the, like going up to the trailer. Um, where I am currently, it is actually, we have a very good facility set up. Um, so all you do is run run the animals into the handling pens and then up through the tub, the alley, through the chute and into the trailer. So it's really good. It doesn't give the cattle a chance to turn around or anything like that. Um, when you're moving cattle or trying to pressure them into the trailer, you don't want to push too hard. Um, I try to be as gentle and calm as I can because if you stay calm, the animal stays calm. Um, I don't believe in electric zappers or anything like that unless you've got one that is like super stubborn but for loading and such um i don't believe in it because they get worked up so the calmer you are and the calmer that you can stay the easier it is to load them and handle them um what else i use pressure points more than i think i do when loading cattle and sheep is different because when you're moving sheep up the alley or something, you walk from their head to their bum. So you walk opposite the direction that they're going and that pressures the sheep to go up, to move. Um, but anyways, with cows, it's a little bit different. So if you're kind of on one side of them towards the back, like a little ways past halfway, be like halfway down the animal, then that pressures them to move ahead. Um, if you are centered, they won't move. Or if you are in front of center, they are gonna wanna back up. So if you can stay behind the center of the animal, then everything kind of works smooth. So for trailer prep preparation and such like that, uh, there is different kind of floors that you can get. So you can get the steel floors with the rivets in it. I'm really, um, or you can get the rubber mat floors. I personally, I like the rubber mat floors and I know a lot of guys don't because they get really slippery, but they are so much easier to clean and they are softer on the animal's feet. Um, and they kind of absorb the, they absorb impact when you hit bumps and stuff like that on the road. So before you load animals, especially with a rubber trailer or a rubber floor, I mean, um, you either use like wood shavings, stuff like that, or you can use um, straw. And actually I use, we use fine chopped straw. So it kind of gives them a little bit more of a better grip as well as soaks up, you know, any, how do I put it? any feces or anything like that so it's not too tr too slippery on the trip um so then moving on to distance and space for an animal in the trailer i don't know off the top of my head what proper spacing is but i like to leave so if i'm loading the trailer i like to leave room for at least one ac extra animal so then nobody's shoved tight. Uh, everybody's got a little bit of room, but they're also tight enough that nobody lays down. Um, when you're hauling like cow-calf pairs, we always sort out whatever we're hauling. Like just not too long ago, we took up to pasture and any, any cow-calf pairs that were, any calves that were born like three weeks ago-ish, they all went and so we sort off the moms and babies and then we sort the babies away from the moms. And it's only for a couple hours. 
So then we take the cows up to pasture and then the last load is only the baby calves. So then nobody's getting stepped on or anything like that. So for shipping animals, like if you are shipping in a semi or even in your small trailer, there is always vents in any trailer. So depending on the temperature outside is um, whether or not and how much ventilation you open. So when it's minus 40, you keep them all closed because the animals will freeze. Pigs are the worst for it because all they are is skin, right? So they get frostbite really bad when they touch the, met the metal on the side of the trailer. Um, so pigs, when you're hauling pigs, you close all the vents and it keeps the it keeps the trailer a little bit warmer for them. Um, cattle and sheep are not prone to frostbite as much as pigs are. Uh, sheep, you want to keep the vents closed because even though you've got you've got wool on the sheep and whatnot, they still get cold. Um, and then cattle, uh, it's nice to have a couple small vents open because they are such big animals, they may overheat but you should have like less than 20% of your vents open for hauling cattle. Um, on the hot summer days, we actually avoid transporting any cows when it's plus 40 out because it is just too hard on the animal and it is too hot out. So um, when it is hot, not saying anybody's gonna be transporting at plus 40, but say about plus 20, I like to leave all the vents open. Any, ve any vents that I possibly can open are open because they need that extra ventilation because it's gonna get really hot in the trailer. Even though we are traveling, they still get hot in there. And I think, I think really that's all. I think I kind of covered everything that I can cover. Um, but yeah, when you're, when you're loading cattle in the heat, the key thing is to never, ever, ever get your cattle worked up because they're already going to be stressed on the road and the less worked up you get them when you're loading, the less stressed out they'll be on the, on the road, I guess. So, yeah, I think that's all.